we have, at least in the last 15 years, really focused a lot on photography, not just portrait photography, but street photography, fine art photography, uh, journalistic photography. And so this panel tonight, um, I hope, kind of exemplifies the kind of coverage we've been giving. We have Martha Cooper, Jeanette Beckman, Miranda Barnes, and longtime... And longtime juxtaposed contributor, art critic, author, Carla McCormick is gonna, he's gonna take over tonight, which is great, which means I don't have to do the panel. That's awesome. So um, everybody enjoy. Um, Carlo, take it in. Yeah, Go thanks everyone for coming out and thanks a lot to Vans for hosting us and giving us some swell new kicks. We really appreciate that. And, um, and really thanks to all of you. And I'd like to start with a really kind of boring question because it interests me. Uh, but it, it, we have like three different generations of photographers uh, up here. And one uh, odd thing, a uh, beautiful thing they have in common is that all of you kind of got your chops through journalism. How do you take something which is editorial about someone else and be somehow personal with your work? Uh, does that make any sense to you? Do you can you, someone say something? Um, you know, it's, I think that one of the things about being a freelance, I don't call myself a photojournalist, I call myself a documentary photographer. I, I consider journalism to be more newsworthy subjects. I prefer feature subjects. And as a freelancer, I get to pick my subjects. But then you have to be clever about pitching your subjects. And the pitching part can be super difficult and not very lucrative. And sometimes it takes, for me, it's taken me 40 years to, I just, I just had an exhibition a few days ago in Miami of photos that I took in Haiti in 1978 and 79 that I had never used before. I am so happy to be able to get them out now. And I think they were, would have been made a good story 40 years ago, but I couldn't convince anybody. What was the subject? Um, they were, it, well, it's, it's interesting. They were kids that made their own toys. And this is what led me, actually, to be interested in graffiti and hip-hop. It, from, I mean, I won't go into it all now, but it, one in, along, if you trace back my interest in graffiti, it, it goes back to seeing these kids in Haiti making little toys and trucks out of tin cans and I took another trip back to Haiti last month, and I have an exhibition now in Miami, and it's called Made in Haiti, and I finally got to use those pictures, but I digress. Anyway, um, we can pick and choose our subject matter, and, and that's important. You're asking how, as an editorial photographer, I would like to think that I can um, tell stories about things that matter to me, and those in the end are the most important stories. The ones that I've done on assignment um, for all kinds of magazines over the years, none of those pictures really have any lasting value personally to me. Only the things that I've chosen myself have, have remained important to me. And, and in the end, usually there is some way to make a little bit of money out of them. But, and, and it's not, I mean, it's not any easier now than it was. You picked a hard career, but a rewarding one, a the rewarding vow, one. The vow of poverty. Yeah. But Jeanette, like, to me, like, you're, you know, uh, you're kind of pretty seminal photographer for that punk era, but to me, the thing which becomes really personal and, and iconic and definitive for you is when you kind of discover the early days of hip-hop, and that became a more personal body of work, is that safe to say? Um, I don't, it's all personal to me, and honestly, I was just because all the things I was interested in, which would be, you know, music and street style and all of that stuff, just managed to, I managed to eke out a living. And, you know, basically back in when I was in London doing the punk stuff, my rent was five pounds a week, which is, you know, for those of you, like ten bucks a week. So I didn't really need a lot of money, you know, I'd get my coffee and the weed I was smoking and whatever, and that, that was about it. And... You know, so I was lucky that, you know, those little melody maker jobs paid 
something, something like 50 bucks maybe. You know, you could be working for two days for 50 bucks. And we didn't really think about money so much. And when I came here... We're going to switch mics real quick because yours goes in and out. Oh, Can sorry. you switch mics? Thank you. Is that better? Yes, that's better. And when I came here, you know, I was still working for a lot of those editorial British magazines taking pictures of hip-hop. And I couldn't... I kind of thought I was going to come here and, you know, make money doing record covers, but nobody would hire me because my stuff was too gritty. And Because <laughs> I had all these pictures of these sort of grubby-looking punks with crazy hair, and that wasn't, you know, you know what I'm saying, the airbrush look was in. And I always thought you actually had more style than everyone else. It's oh, kind of funny. Oh, thank you, Carla. Well, <laughs> I appreciate that. But, you know, so I thought I was going to make money at record covers, doing record, you know, record covers for record companies, but I couldn't. So I started working for, you know, I did a lot of work for magazines for free, like where I met Carlo. Where I was working for free as well. Right. <laughs> we, but look at the amazing things that we covered. I, we, we worked for Paper Magazine, the startup of Paper, and I worked for them for five years for free. I know Carlo, I, 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 I don't hate to ask, but you know, we never got paid. That was, but everybody worked for free because we loved what we were doing and I got to shoot all sorts of interesting things that I never would have shot before. And, you know, so for me, a lot of my so-called assignments, and it's still to this day, there's somebody in the audience right now that I'm working with, I do all sorts of interesting things, stories for, that, you know, are unusual. We just did a story about uh, Liverpool football club supporters in America, which is really interesting. And, uh, you know, those things, that's what I'm interested in. So lucky, I mean, you know, <coughs> I've just have been kind of blessed to photograph a lot of things I love and manage, but, you know, don't expect to make a lot of money. Because sometimes you have money, sometimes you don't have any money. It's just how it goes. Yeah, I've been lucky too. I feel like the assignments that I've sort of been tapped for uh, would have been things that I would have photographed anyways had I had like accessibility. Um, but I'm also shooting it on film, and it's as, you know, as long form as possible for a newspaper. So it feels like me because um, I don't have to turn it around and I can take time with the subject. And I'm, you know, doing, I'm, I have the ability to do like travel assignments and like spend time with, you know, a story or a subject for, you know, four or five days. Um, so it's pretty cool. Still learning though to like balance, you know, both of those aspects of like, you know, commissions and personal work, but how they definitely overlap without a doubt. They do. I mean, one informs the other, right? Yeah. Yeah. And do you turn down? You can't really afford to turn down. Um, I, I haven't um, learned. I mean, I definitely take assignments that I'm like, okay, for the money. Um, but if it feels like totally un uncomfortable, I won't do it. And I'll just find another way. I, I can't. You know, um, because I think that it's also just like the way that they, um, just like way Google works now, it's like those photos are there forever, you know, in a sense. Um, so yeah, it's like also being mindful of what you put out. Yeah, and, and I think that um, what's interesting with all three of you is that somehow you found a way to train your lens on stuff that it isn't getting a lot of recognition or love or visibility in the mainstream. I, I think certainly with your work, Miranda, you've done some, you know, on, on the journalistic front, like just a uh, story you did, I think it was for the Times, about uh, the economic woes of uh, a class of people who have to work through pregnancy, right? And that's like, that's like so intense, but like, you know, uh, it's like, so, I mean, I, it, there is something about kind of, we're in such a mediated landscape, and I think it's, I, it's probably daunting for photographers now to think about, like, how do I take a, a picture about something where 80,000 people haven't already Instagrammed it already? <laughs> do any of you have advice on that? No, right? <laughs> I didn't expect any, I just thought I'd ask. No, I mean, that's the problem. It's, it's it's a super competitive. It's always been a competitive career <laughs> of photography, and uh, now it's it's even more so. And it's trees. 
pretty much any topic that you want to photograph, somebody else has done it and done it really well. Yeah, and I, I do like the, the kind of early stories of like in the trenches with all the other photographers because every now and then I'll hear from somebody. It's like, I don't know, I was trying to photograph something and the next thing I knew this old lady like elbowed me in the face. Because <laughs> you're still pretty fierce that way, right? Well, yeah, I mean, if I would, Don't stand yeah, between Martha and the picture, you'll get hurt. That's something I learned from the post. The New York Post really taught me how to, you know, push everyone else away. Sometimes you have to do that. Especially as a woman. So you're working in film. You've kind of been very I'm happy. Not I'm you, curious about why you saw it. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about this. <laughs> they so they oh, let you no, tell us. <laughs> okay, yeah, so I, I, it's, um, so I was like in school and I was, you know, I would call myself like a hobbyist photographer. I had like maybe one or two like commissions under my belt, um, but the editor that gave me the MLK 50 assignment had seen the website that I had and like the bare minimum Instagram that I had, which I had posted like a couple of film photos, but when she told me about um, the job and what she wanted me to do with it, she said, I want you to shoot this in film. She was like, because it seems like that's exactly how you want it to, you know, want. I don't, I mean, I think it was supposed to be um, more slowed down. The story is sort of about, um, like 50 years after MLK, what hasn't changed and what has. Um, so I went a week and a half prior to April 4th. Um, and I think it was just supposed to feel a little bit more, not as sort of like quick, you know, upload to the computer of just like what Memphis is still like. Um, and I enjoyed that because that would have been an assignment that I would have like done regardless. I would have gone to Memphis and just photographed Memphis, you know. Um, but to then have like the times as my sort of support so since then I've sort of been like um, not pigeonholed but uh, it's just like I've had assignments where an editor is like what did you do for this and I'm like oh I used to feel like okay do that and I'm like okay but, so, but they are like actually really rich and gorgeous and kind of contemplative images and um, uh, the, that MLK story you did and I, I, I've been uh, you know to the they made a museum out of the uh, motel where, where uh, Martin Luther King was staying when he got killed, and it's kind of preserved, and it's sort of, it's got like a, you know, that kind of mid-century modern, yes. 60s, like, it's kind of a, an amazing place, and it's also like, kind of still in the ghetto, at least yes. last time I was there, it was sort of like... Well, yeah, Memphis is a city um, that has a lot of issues, and that's kind of what the story was about. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I felt honored to go down there and... Did you go to Al Green's church? No. Oh, I only went to Mason one. Temple, so yeah, yeah it was... It was Sorry. <laughs> I like Memphis, Sorry, to kick out. Um, <laughs> but, but in that, uh, because I think of that work and I can, you know, think of so many classics from uh, Martha and Jeanette, and it's this idea of like, what is an iconic photo and how do you produce it when inherently, like, you're also kind of iconoclast as well? And is it like the this kind of Cartier Bresson decisive moment or whatever? It's like, how do you, is it just something you find, like, later when you look at the pictures and if you take enough, you get the right one? Or is there, is there a way of, of coining something which is kind of iconic and outside of time and, and the perfect distillation of? Slick Rick or Donnie, like on the train or something like that? Uh, those pictures are few and far between. <laughs> those iconic pictures. Um, of course, you're always aiming for that, or at least I'm always, you're always hoping that there's going to be the right combination of subject matter, lighting, everything. But it's it almost never happens. But I mean, that's what, I think that's what the challenge, for me, that's the challenge, is to aim for that. Um, but can can do you find it later? Rarely. Usually, you sort of think you have it and you have it. Um, sometimes you think you have it and you don't have it. But but mostly, I don't find it. I don't say, oh, I didn't get anything, and then I look at the pictures and sure enough, I had a great shot. No, I don't generally find a great shot if I didn't already think that I had the the, the makings of a great shot. How about for you, Jeanette, because you work so much in the studio, which is different than kind of a Martha on the fly. Like, is there a way of like working, choreographing with these artists who are kind of 
irascible and don't take direction very well or like getting like getting their persona just right? Well, I think, you know, to me every uh, photo is like a collaboration with the subject. So obviously, you know, you've got them in the studio and it's a little easier, you're right, to corral them. And, but you never know what's going to happen because you don't know these people. So, you know, they come to your studio, they're in your space, and who knows what they're going to do. If they're going to be wild and crazy, if they're going to, you know, grab their crutch like Sir Rick or, you know, I, I Believe you. I didn't ask him to grab his crutch, but he did it. And it happens to be one of my so called iconic pictures. And, you know, I mean, and you do know, like, personally, if I'm taking a shot and, I, and it's going to be a really good one, it is a sort, of, a sort of physical feeling, like, you know, like they're standing up on the back of your neck or something. There is a sort of feelings that you get, and it's not, it is kind of rare. But the other thing is, you know, that word iconic, history helps a lot. And I think both Martha and I, you know, you know, people are looking at stuff you shot 30 years ago and going, oh my God, look, there's salt and pepper or whatever. And, you know, that is super helpful. And I, when I was taking those pictures, I didn't think of them as iconic. They were jobs and I had a great time doing them. And, you know, I got to hang out with all these really cool people and I love music and all that. So, you know, I think history helps, right? Yeah. But I also... Do you look forward to this? Do you, do you, do you, do you, do you, no, I do. You're going to be rocking, girl. I do, I do. But I also will say that, like, in, in my case, something that I've learned this year is trying to um, re remind yourself of, like, your gut feeling, you know what I mean? Which is hard, and sometimes you're not going to... It's, it's wrong, but um, it's also so hard with social media now, with this, like, whole algorithm, like... You could have a photo that you really love and like show your friends that you really love and then you post it and it could be at the wrong time and you only get a certain amount of likes and then you start to question, is it a good photo? Is it not a good photo? You know, and um, it's such a daunting thing to have and it shouldn't um, factor into what uh, makes a good photograph for you or for, for the audience that you're trying to share it with. Um, but I find that sometimes I, I catch myself doing that. Um, so it's really hard. Yeah, it's pernicious. I'm, I, you know, I don't do any social media, but uh, I think if I had my career depended upon how many likes I got, I probably would have slipped my wrist. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so like, well, I got some heat mail. I must be on the right track. Now. But like, I don't know what it's like. Uh, I, one of the people who's in, in this room, uh, Shu, I was with him in Marseille. Sure. And uh, like, he, he, he posted something which was like this long kind of thing he'd had going with somebody there and then uh, it was like uh, something they'd done like once a year and then the last he did this photo and he posted it and it ended up like with him because they've always done because his shoe right there was always his shoe and stuff like that and then her idea was like well put your shoe on my chest and then so I'm with, while I'm with him it's like, how many people did you lose? How many followers? 600. 600 people. And like, you know, real trolling, hateful stuff. This is male subjugation of a woman. This is, this is you know, when people know, everyone's quoting um, uh, our favorite Supreme Court justice. It's like, we just want them to take their foot off our neck. It was like, oh yeah, because that was like really close to the favorite Ginsburg. But anyway, so it, it, is, it is not that we're dictated by our feedback now. Right? By hundreds of people we don't even know, thousands of yeah. people. We've got no idea who they are, but we, and but we want them to like our stuff. It's actually really disturbing yeah. that it's come to this. My yeah. attitude is, I'm lost. I don't need any followers. Don't follow me. Um, um, if I want to work, I need to have it. You know, absolutely. You know, it's, it's so like, yeah. it's, you know, it's just, it's not. I took like a social media break uh, like a month and a half ago, and. I had a lot of people ask me, like, aren't you worried about, like, not getting jobs? And for a second I was, but I was also just like, I'm good with emails, so, but it was for my own sake, you know? It was like, I had to remind myself that, like, my mental health, my, my space is also more important than um, Instagram. And do, do, does everyone need to feed the beast, like, gaping mob, social media? Like, do you all have to post pretty regularly? I love Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of knew we'd have a nice crowd the second like I heard that Martha posted it about tonight. I go, she's got some followers. We'll <laughs> you know what? 
it's self-publishing. It gives me an opportunity. I can put anything out there before. I don't. I don't have to make a proposal. I don't have to pitch it to a magazine. I don't have to. I don't have to do it. I can decide exactly what picture I want, exactly how I want to crop. I can pre-edit it. You know, lighter, darker, whatever, and put it up there. I love and put the caption. Like we never had that power before. And. Is it yeah. like zines, uh, Jeanette? Do you feel like it's well, DIY? Yeah, yeah, I think it is a little bit like a zine. And I actually, I mean, I love Instagram too in this way that your writer is like a beast and you have to feed it. And I know that, you know, a lot of people are giving out jobs, you know, you know, regarding how many followers you have, which is kind of crazy. I just filled out a form to get, try and get sponsorship from a camera company. <laughs> One of the first questions was, you know, what social media do you have and how many followers? <laughs> and I'm like, what's that got to do with the fact that I've been taking photos for 40 years? Really, yeah. not much. Yeah. But it, it's a double-edged sword. I love, I love Instagram too, and I like, I say this because had I tried to do something like what I'm doing right now 10 years ago, I wouldn't have been able to do it. You know, it's been, it's been an opportunity for me as someone who's not taken the the non-traditional art route to sort of you know, get in and be able to, you know, make work that I wanted to make, but also is told from a perspective of a black woman, you know? Yes, uh, that's really uh, quite uh, an absence. And just women in general, I mean, uh, everyone like was asked, like Evan, like, oh, give us some images, we'll put it in the slideshow. Like, well, I don't take images and stuff, and I put it in this weird one, it pops up every now and then. And it's just a photo from 1981 that Warhol took, and it's a scrum of photographers. And I just thought it's kind of like, I, would, I think Martha loves, loves kind of the, the fetish of, of people and their cameras, but I also thought like, yeah, look at that. They're all white and they're all men. <laughs> yeah. And so it's been, it's, it's changed a bit, but not that much, right? It's changed a lot. Has it changed a lot? Yeah. Do you think there's more diverse? It must oh, be I do think so. I, you yeah. were the first woman at the post. Yeah, right? there were like 15 men and me. That's, that's not the case anymore. That newspapers. Well, you were tougher than all those guys, though. <laughs> and then you taught me a really, like, because I know nothing, so this might be really obvious, but uh, I, I did learn something from you one time. We were in Germany, you come over, uh, you were in the show, and, and I curated it, and you actually chose a work I didn't really think much of. Uh, you know, oh, wow. Someone else put in the show, I can't remember, it was like uh, 3D trick art. And that's not, and you liked it. Any trick art. Yeah, you did. You chose this piece never, of art. Never, never. And I was like, okay, Martha, if you like it. And then, and I was, and you kind of knew I did. Trick art. You photographed this thing, and then you were showing me like within an hour how many likes you got, and how many reposts, and stuff like that. And I go, and I was so excited because it was someone was hyping something, but I can't hype anything. I, of course, I make up stories, but I don't like this is my version of history. I know, but you did it. And, and but this is like, you know, the, the people who do those drawings on the sidewalk where all of a sudden it looks like you're about to fall in oh, a chasm and an alligator's walking, you know, like this kind of tromboid, anamorphic, anamorphic distortion stuff. And, and I was so excited because everyone loved it and was getting so much attention. And I'm like, take another picture. And you were like, no, I don't like to do that because if you all of a sudden take eight pictures and post them all at once, people scroll through it and they just kind of consume it all at once and don't, is this, makes My sense? My Instagram is carefully curated. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so do you all hold back a bit? Like, is this something, like, is this something all of you do? There's a lot of pictures, but like, you know, I, I need to like, I rarely post. <laughs> you rarely post? I re no, I really do. I like posted the other day for the first time. I was like, Ooh, wow, it's been a minute. Okay. But, you know. Well. <laughs> I mean, you don't do it every day. Because you're right. It is. Yeah, People just like, scroll through and then they, they yeah. lose importance. You know? I don't like it when somebody else puts a lot of it. It's too much, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, we're, it's kind of a glut. It's pretty hard to like be a tree in the forest right now. Um, or something like that. I'll work on that metaphor. <laughs> something which would probably annoy all of you and I kind of like this is a self-fulfilling prophecy like oh man I want to get 
three women I adore to like all get really angry at me. But I thought I'd do hyphenates <laughs> and uh, hyphenate titles for you and to see how you respond. A hyphenate would be, instead of just saying, you know, instead of like locating each of you by your work and going like, oh, Martha Cooper, you know, graffiti photography or like, you know, something like that. I want to try this. I want to say, uh, I wrote them down. But I write really small, so excuse me. So Martha Cooper would be photographer anthropologist. Jeanette Beckman would be photographer portraitist. And uh, Miranda Barnes would be photographer activist. How am I doing? Do you guys each want to respond to it? Tell me where I'm wrong and where I'm right. I mean, or just I, tell me I how long I prefer the word documentary to Okay, but you do have like kind of an interesting knowledge and intuitive background in that, right? Well, I married an anthropologist. Because <laughs> 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 I can't. And, you know, I have a, a year of graduate work in anthropology. But I, I really think documentary is what I do. Okay. Yeah, it's not, it's not stuff really anywhere else. So it's, okay. It's documentary. What's because I document. I mean, because I have a very literal take on the subject matter that I'm shooting. I want my pictures to actually show specific things in the pictures. I'm not. I'm not after like unusual angles or unusual lighting or distortions in any way. But isn't the anthropology supposed to be a science where you take away as much distortion as you can? As fraught as it is with its own subjectivity. I mean, it's, it's more than that. Okay. Let's just stick with that. Okay. All right. I got off easy on that one. How about you, Jeanette? I'm, I'm okay with portraitist. Okay. I've never heard that word before, exactly, but it's a good word. I'm good at that. Okay. That's good. Yeah, I take it portraits. And I really was inspired by you, kind of like, as your work is a kind of social activism a little bit. Yeah. I mean, you can say advocate. Yeah, advocate's nice. I because, like that. Yeah. I got that as a kid when I started writing for Art Forum, and uh, I was like kind of your age. And uh, they went like, I go, well, I'm not really a critic because I don't really like to say mean things about stuff. And they go, no, no, we have a place for you here. We have something called an advocate. You know, it's like, <laughs> where you, you know there's people who advocate what they like, what they care about. Yeah. yeah. I think that that's maybe more like me. But when you bring up conscience to that, when you bring up a kind of social conscience, that's where I thought of. I didn't mean a uh, activist like you're no, chaining yourself to the barricades. No, no, I know. I think that, that the word, um, you know, can have yeah. obviously so many meanings. It's yeah. nuanced. It's not just. And then, how about like an old, other old photo trope is this idea of photography's witness. Um, this is like Kappa in the beginning of the International Center of Photography, and, and, and in a way like Magnum and stuff like that. <coughs> that somehow. If somebody's not there, you know, photographing the bring it back to the tree falling in the forest. But no, uh, if somebody's not there as witness, that, that, that you know, that the witness matters. Is, do you ever feel? Did you feel that photographing kids? Are you with with um, some of the seniors? You know, when people talk about photography as witness, they're usually talking about like a wartime yeah, situation. Yeah, that's, that's where it came up with Carol. Um, for me, I do feel I mean, it's more like historic preservation. I'm more about everyday life. It's something that people witness all the time, but they're not documenting. I like some of the ordinary things that maybe they're ordinary now, and 40 years from now, suddenly they're not so ordinary. So I, I think ahead and think, you know, this isn't going to be around in 10, 20, 30 years. And if I take a picture of it now, and, and, you know, it takes time. These pictures have to kind of marinate to be valuable. I mean, that's what you were saying, history. We were discussing history. this earlier. Yeah. I mean, without Martha, there would be no graffiti. Yeah. Well, well, maybe. You know, Martha and Henry, you know. And a few others. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I see a lot of books back there and not my book. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which one, Martha? You have so many. I saw John. No, there's none of mine back there. You know, they've got my like, graffiti books, but not my books. So, a few others is not going We'll blame Evan for that. Right, but you're saying that you. I mean, and by the same token, you know, I documented all those hip hop people and the way people look. And your books aren't back there. And my book isn't back there. Either. No, that's really true. And your book. Do you have your book? Oh, <laughs> those books sound like what? <laughs> What's you your book? It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> 
it is. You are documenting. You are. I mean, you're not. We're not war photographers. No, no. But you know, whatever, wherever you go, you know. Like last year, I did a whole project to get out the boats in the midterm, and I went to all these different places like Jacksonville and Milwaukee and St. Louis and photographed people on a what sort of avid online on a white background. And you know, those I'm sort of documenting what people look like in, you know, the bus station in Jacksonville. And that's kind of really cool to me. It's and everything, their clothing, their cars, everything. Right, exactly. Changes. You know, so it doesn't have to be war. It can be you know small town life or yeah, a side of the deli exactly. or you know what soda they were drinking or whatever. That's why it's much nicer to do stuff in the street but then But I also <coughs> to to that point, like for me, sometimes when I like photograph communities, um, you know you know, the the person that I want to photograph sees me who's, you know, looks like them sometimes and it's like, wait a minute, like this could be cool or, you know, they're like, I've never been photographed before, you know, so I'm also bringing this like uh, sort of um, like value in a way. Not, I went, that's not the right word that I'm trying to look for, but um, uh, visibility, for one visibility, thing. but also maybe just feeling important. Um, and I sometimes think that that's like the reason I do what I do um, or try to do what I do, um, which is just like letting people talk to me and hear their stories. Um, and I've started, I mean, I've always tried to be good about like. Um, bringing prints back for people or getting their information oh, yeah. and like sending Super a scan yeah. um, because I sometimes find that like you know a lot of uh, marginalized communities just don't have good portraits of themselves so if I could do that and just you know that makes that makes me feel good and, and Martha you've done there's a great thing uh, Selena the director of this great documentary uh, Martha is here tonight but um, there is this thing where you're basically going back to these people and and then, then there's like a scene where you go into someone's house and it's like every photo there was something you kind of gifted them because they had like no photos of their lives. I mean, I've printed thousands of pictures. I do it online. I, I literally buy them by the thousand to get them cheaper price and make sure to bring them back. Yeah. No, that's, that's really good. Now, but, but this idea of like the, the marinating of time and stuff, what, one thing, uh, I, I, I thought about that time as I worked at the beginning when they started this thing called the Smithsonian Photo Initiative. And it was the idea that actually bigger than Corvus, bigger than any, you know, any huge photo trove, that actually if you put together all the photos that America owns through its Smithsonian institutions, and this is like, it's, it's vast, it's like, uh, and it could be the fact that the Hubble Deep Space Telescope is producing probably 100 images a day or something like that. It's just this massive thing, and they try to put it all online. I don't know how well it worked in the end, but what they try to do is create a uh, situation of, because it's the people's photos, but, you know, we own all these things, is how do you, how do you create an open tagging system? So that, like, it could be, this photo could be going there for, like, oh, it's a, it's a Native American. But then maybe another person's going like, oh, check out those shoes. And another person's going like, oh, they're standing by this old school bar. You know, that there's so much information that you're trying to take a photo for one reason, and then over time, it captures so much. Have you found this, does this happen with your work, where all of a sudden it's like, yeah, I just meant to capture that, but it's, it, because photography yeah. captures so much detail? Yeah, totally. I mean, I have that picture of Run DMC and Posse, you know, and it's Run DMC hanging out by a car on the street that they live. Oh, is it up there? Oh, good! Oh, perfect. It's perfect. Perfect example. And a lot of people love that photo, not because it's Run DMC necessarily, but because, you know, they're wearing a certain type of sneaker, or they're, you know, they're... Or it's the old Plymouth. In the right, it's yeah. the old Plymouth, exactly. People, you know, are referencing, oh, I used to have those, you know, gazelles or whatever. And it means a lot to people, almost as much as the band. You know? and you're right. There are all these, it's always, I guess that's where the Instagram hashtag comes in useful, to hashtagging every single thing they wore. Or, I'm still learning that, you know, I think, but I think that, um, 
especially with like how heightened Instagram is, that happens all the time, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, it's, it's interesting to think about it that though, like how, how my photos might change over time um, and what they will mean. It's amazing how much information's in it, which is not, I mean, I actually, when I tried to start learning about graffiti in a historical sense beyond our little history with it, uh, with Martha, was like, I started looking at the kind of canon of fine art photography and going like, oh, look, the side of this and Cartier, you know, and it's like where it's not incidental. It's actually like that it's in there compositionally, that Ouija or that all these different people kind of like, use the fact that there was some bit of graffiti there to add something, you know, and it, it was a way of learning about graffiti. Um, I'm gonna, I want to open it up to other questions, but uh, just one last one, uh, uh, some discomfort, um, you know, because we're all wearing really comfortable shoes, but I think that we should also feel like we're dancing on a tightrope and high heels a little bit, <laughs> which I've done. <laughs> no, but um, I, I would like to thank because we're we're here also uh, on behalf of Juxtapose, uh, which is an art magazine, and everyone has their own navigation and ambivalent relationship to this thing called the art world. Uh, Martha had a, a great photo gallery where the guy basically got bought out by a bigger photo gallery, so you're, you're kind of between galleries now. Uh, Jeanette has a really like one of the more prestigious uh, galleries out in LA, now finally repping your work. You guys had to work a long time. Yeah. And Miranda, you're probably like maybe a couple years from now. But uh, what is your aspirations and your relationship to this thing called fine art photography, and where does your work fit in with that? Mm, good question. Um, that was never an aspiration of mine, to be a fine art photographer. Um, I just always wanted print. Print was my ambition, to get my either books, magazines, newspapers. However, um, it turns out that there is some money to be made selling your prints as quote, fine art, but you have to play the fine art game. The prints have to be printed in a certain way. They have to be edition. You have to track the editions. Um, I'm willing to try that because I need to make a living, basically. But actually, if I didn't need to need it, I wouldn't do it. But I, you, you know, told me the other day that like you really wanted, I mean, because I was talking to you about another situation. Yeah. You're like... Yeah, but no, I want my photos to stand like in a photo gallery in that photo context and not just be like for graffiti fans. You kind of told me something like well, that effect. I don't want to be considered a graffiti photographer, and I don't, but f a photography gallery is maybe a little bit different than a fine art gallery. Okay. You know, I, I really. Yeah, I don't know. You know what? Maybe I don't know what I want. Yeah, that's why I said <laughs> no, because we're all ambivalent. I mean, you know, it's... I'm ambivalent. Yeah, okay, yeah, can we, I say that? I'm we ambivalent. love it and hate it. You know, I mean, I need to make a living, so that's one way of making a living. Yeah. And I'd prefer to be able to make a living by publishing. Cool. How about you, Jeanette? Because you also did a whole body, amazing body of work where she took a lot of her classic photos and then working with Say Adams, who's a really important artist in, in his own right... You did all these collaborations with all these artists, and but we, you know, what's your relation to all this? Well, uh, the mashup, which was what he's talking about, was a was an incredible thing because it revitalized all these hip hop photos that I'd taken in the '80s, and you know, artists reinterpreted them. And you know, I do have this new gallery, and it is a really a fine art gallery, and they're trying Fahey to Fahey Klein. Fahey Klein. If anyone's got shout, a lot of money and wants to buy something, to Fahey, yeah, exactly. And you know, on the one hand, I went there kicking and screaming because, you know, I love the idea of having people come around to my place and you know selling them a photo of, of salt and pepper for fifty bucks because that's all they've got. But then on the other hand, now I have the gallery and I'm not allowed to do that. You know, they are they priced everything and everything's addition, just like Martha said. And it's a, <clears throat> you know, I'm not sure where it's going, but at, you know, this stage of my career, I feel like it's nice to be recognized as a, you know, as an artist rather than just somebody who took a bunch of photos and, you know, they're just selling them. And 
it's actually great. And I had a show there last year with with the mashup, and they published a book, and they're selling these prints with a lot of money, big prints. And it's great. It's actually great. It's a whole new world for me, and I'm just learning how to navigate that fine art world, really. Yeah. How about you? What do you want to do with well, this? She, well, she's learning, and she's young. So. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I'm, I'm more interested. They, they're, they're figure, they've kind of half figured it out. Like, where, where do you, where well, do you want to go Well, to the addition's this? point, I, I'm starting to think of stuff like that. I've had... You know, not like too many opportunities, but definitely opportunities of, you know, um, printing my work maybe. And I've definitely have hold back um, and I've started to think about um, how many times I put out photos, um, especially if it's like um, a photo that people really like. So just yeah. being more mindful of that, you know. Um, but then also, um, yeah, making making sure that I stay true to why I started doing this, if that makes any sense. Yeah. You know, like I don't, um, I'm not from that traditional background, so I find that um, there is this sort of, um, you know, stigma, the art world and what it means and. Um, it's pretty privileged. It's very privileged and I don't fit into that. Yeah, I, I, was, don't I was wondering how you'd feel that. <laughs> you but know? suppose, I mean, you have to use your imagination on this. Suppose I was like a fat cat art world gallery person and I said 500 Moran million no, yeah. no, no. <laughs> I know I can't afford you but I, can, I know some rich people no but suppose I said like I want to do a show with you in six months like how would you think about that differently than if a publication said to you like oh we love your work and we want to do a portfolio for a portfolio of you or something like that what, well, would, what additions, would a show look like additions yeah. um I would make sure that um, I think also like making sure that the photos that I took, whether that's for commissions or assignments, I also have the right to it right. because sometimes you need to read the fine print of these contracts that you sign. Um, I've learned that. Um, so making sure that I can actually even print the work, right? Like if I really like a photo, but I realize, oh wait, I don't own this. I take know? half the amount of money just to keep my copyright. I won't work. I won't. Yeah. I won't. Even if it's like something like kind of hackish, I'd still like. I still feel like I should always own my words, and yeah. I think you should all own your pictures and right. and like fuck those contracts. Yeah, um, but also, some of them are insane. They're like, and we own this now, like and forever in all media now or yet to be invented, and like, and if we, yeah, and it'll be on the world because we might colonize Mars, and like we own it there too. No, it's true. So I'm I'm learning that, and I'm also learning. Um, you know, quantity over quality. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, I like that. I, I know that was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys, it's been a long day. Uh, you know what I meant by that. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, learning that, and then also um, making sure that the work that I print is what I'm actually trying to convey. Yeah. Um, I don't want to print anything that's not going to be. I, you know, I want I want to see my work tangible, but I'm okay with holding out if it means making sure that it's exactly what I want to print. I don't want to have to do it just to say like, oh, I printed this at 24. Like, look at me, I'm a real artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, um, yeah. So I've had opportunities of doing like pop up shows and this and that, and I've kind of have been like, I'm really you know grateful and humble that you have considered me for this, but I don't want to rush this. You know, like I've got I got a lot of time. You know? Super smart. Thank you. Yeah, we, I was. <laughs> how about you guys? I was really stupid at that age. Right? She's got a lot figured out. But anyway, um, uh, I could be really greedy, but there's so many really smart people in the room. So if you don't mind sticking around, can we open it up some questions? To maybe I should. I'm not going to do Phil Donahue and dance around. No, I got. I got, the, I got the microphone. Yeah. I can do it. I'll, I'll do the. Anyone have a question? You do. You record. Thanks. Hi. I guess I have to stand up a bit. I can't see you. Hi. I'm actually a former journalist, so it was really fascinating hearing from all you guys. How easy or how difficult it was it? I used to work at the Post. We'll discuss <laughs> later. But how easy or difficult? <laughs> yeah, I, I identified a lot of what you said. How easy or difficult it was it um, for you to take the pictures you wanted to take and? work with a reporter at the same time. I know the Times, a lot of times, they'll send you independently, but I know when I was at the Post, you were alongside the photographer. I mean, alongside, yeah, you know what I'm saying. How easy or difficult was it for you to sort of temper what you're doing depending on what the subject you were photographing or 
what you were writing about, what they were writing about. I mean, how were you able to get together on that? Um, you mean when when I worked with a reporter? When you worked with the reporter, I actually yeah. enjoy working with reporters. Mm -hmm. um, I like collaborating with them. Um, sometimes they get in the way <laughs> if, if they're interviewing and I want to take it. But in yeah. general, I think reporters can uh, they can find out they can find out a lot more information mm -hmm. than I can maybe mm -hmm. because I'm looking more visually and they're really. In interviewing subjects and and turn you know if you have a good relationship with a reporter I think you can really do a much better story. I mean, do you ever go in with preconceived notions of what you're going to always shoot and then and they tweak it always for you? and then and then find out that, that that was like completely wrong. <laughs> you know, I I often have a preconceived idea of a picture and I'm imagining something and I think I can pull it together and I get there and it's like totally impossible. <laughs> exactly. So. I mean, you know, every, and you have to be willing to be flexible in those okay. cases. Thank you. Yeah, any? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be you curious what you guys say yeah. about this. Yeah, both yeah. of you, yeah. Dacha, I'd love to know from the Times, from you, yeah. Miranda. Okay, I've only worked with, um, I've done like maybe five or six travel assignments for them, and only like two or three of them, I think, were with a reporter, but I've never had um, like a bad experience with okay. with them yet. <laughs> what about with the subject, like oh. working with a rock and roll person or? Oh, I mean, okay. I've had I've had difficult like assignments. Like I've had people flake on me. Like um, I did a story for the Daily, this one, um, Charm City, um, which was like a five part episode on like Baltimore and um, sort of the um, corruption that was happening within the police department, but then also the story of a mother who lost her son to one of the cops um, mm -hmm. in the department. Mm -hmm. And I mean, she was grieving. I mean, it's not, it's, so that was, that was difficult. And I remember at one point um, putting my camera down and just like looking at her and I was just like, what do you need right now? Like, mm. I'm not, I'm not gonna take a picture of you crying and you know, that's not why I'm here. You know, that's why they sent me to, to do more um, empathetic photos and um, yeah, so I, I put my camera down and she was just like, I need to find this shirt with his face on it. So I went through her closet and I, wow. I looked and she, we never found it, but she was like, sometimes I can throw a tantrum. I was like, I know, but we'll, we'll you know, we'll get through this, you know, um, because yeah, it's, it's important for me to make sure that the, the person that I'm photographing is comfortable. Um, because that doesn't sit right with me if it's if I know that I got the photo out of a weird you know um, weird time in the sort of you know time that I was spending with them. Thank you. Yeah. Great I mean, question. And the only thing, yeah, great question. And the only thing, you know, when you're photographing some celebrity and the reporter you know, has to spend a lot of time doing the interview and you have like three minutes left to take the picture, that can happen. Yeah. I mean, that's the only bad side of it, but the great side of it is you get to hear all these stories and you get yeah. to know more about the person. So when it's your, you get your five minutes, you know, it kind of helps you take the picture. Thank you. It's good to hear that side. Thank you. And from the reporter's side, I was kind of horrible because I'd always have such a good time talking to them and then all the photographers would be like stuck waiting for three hours while we did like some horrible bonding, you know, brotherhood thing and they'd be like, and then, then the star would be like, yeah, you got two minutes, fuck you. Exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about, exactly that. Uh, Anybody else have a question? Wow, all these smart people and they're so shy. I love it. Yeah, you guess what? Hi, how are you? Hi. Uh, so I was wondering like for you what is what it takes or what is the most important thing to make it through photography and to well to transcend as you guys are doing or you did. True and transcendental. Right, start. Um something that I've learned this year is my self care. Um, and not being, trying to not get overwhelmed by assignments and sort of this, the hoopla of all of it. Um, so I try to make sure that I get sleep. And I know that sounds crazy, but like actually being like very strict about that because I can't function if I don't have sleep, you know? And I find that sometimes this whole narrative, you know, you'll sleep when you're dead and the hustle never stops. And I mean, to a certain point, I, I, I know I hustle, but... Um, I don't need to hustle to the point where I feel completely drained. Um, so I'm trying to I'm trying to learn that of like what it takes to like do photography, but also caring about yourself because you can't 
put out your best if you know you're not your best. And you could teach Martha some lessons in that. <laughs> you could learn some lessons from this young woman here, <laughs> because you you like you you're just so tireless and fierce about it. You I, wow. you'll wow. run down the street all day. That's different. Being tireless is. I mean, like. Being like a go-getter is different. I just mean like when you're feeling. No, I, I mean I mean like she never stops. I'm a good sleeper. I'm a good sleeper. Yeah, she no. can't. She when she I'm will sleeping. like. I'm. She can fall asleep in the chair right now if we let her. Yeah. <laughs> I, have an, I, have a, I have an answer for that, which is I think you have to learn to handle rejection. I think this is like a most important lesson. Um, you just have to let it roll off your back and and. There's, you just get rejected like hundreds of times. Mm -hmm. Like all kinds of story proposals that you think are great ideas and they don't. And maybe you're submitting, I mean, Subway Art, which you might know, I mean, I don't know how many, we must have submitted that to 50 publishers. Rejection, 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 rejection. You just have to, you just have to learn not to take it personally. Yeah. Or you can't move on. Yeah, and also you, know? you need to know what you really want to do and follow your passion. If you're really passionate about something, shooting something, you should go ahead and do it, no matter how many yeah. people tell you it's not worth doing. Just have it as your personal project and, and keep, keep working at it. Yeah. And I will also just add quickly to Martha's point about just rejection and also understanding that you're not going to vibe with any, everyone. You know, I find that like, there's this whole idea of like, you know, you have to make sure that you're um, always connected to editors and like friends with them and, you know, people that can get your name out there. And sometimes you just don't vibe with people. And that's not a bad thing. That's sometimes a good thing, you know. Um, so you have to look at it um, and try to take the positive out of rejection and also just the relationships that won't really be there because you just don't get along with someone, you know. Yeah, working. I mean, I, I never felt like I worked for any magazine so much as I worked for certain editors who kind of encouraged and supported what we do, right? It's like, it's kind of, it's part of the, the necessary symbiotic. You have to find your circle. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. I'll be really quick. Hi, guys. Um, and thanks to you. No problem. My yeah, pleasure. this is our wonderful hostess, so thank you, Sam. Miranda, I think you're a, an anomaly, so you might not be necessarily a part of this question. Um, but because of the sort of photographic landscape that we are currently sort of participating in, do you worry about the younger generation and not maybe having the same level of hustle? Do you feel like there's a certain level of commitment that might be missed? Do you mean because of social media? Yeah, or like the quality of sort of the photographic commitment is just um, slightly diluted. Or that's my opinion, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I shouldn't inject my opinion. No, I... No, that's where, that's where questions Miranda, come again, from. you are not a part of this. <laughs> I get it, Sam. You don't want me here. <laughs> I bow down, I bow down. I mean, I think you're right because there's so much of it. And, you know, it's like I say, you've got, you know, whatever, 20,000 followers, and you don't know who these people are and why they're liking your picture, but, you know, you're... And, and the fact that it matters to you is, is... I think it is. I think, you know, the, the stand... It is diluted, and you don't have to do, put in so much work to get to that point where you've got your 20,000 followers. I mean, it's a, it's a strange thing, and the fact that it even matters... Yeah, I, I agree with you. I hate to say it. I don't agree. I, mean, I think I there's some amazing young... There are, it's I true. mean, there, there's some in this room that we know, and Selena is one, and Spencer is one. Spencer, who... Jaime. Jaime, well, maybe he's not as young as... <laughs> I mean, Spencer, oh, Spencer oh, just... Oh, oh, I don't can't believe Spencer you went there, Spencer just told girl. me he was 21, yeah. you know? And, and he's out there, and I've seen him, like, all over the world like flying drones and, and, okay, he's a videographer, not a, so we, I mean, we can include videographers yeah, we can in include this. Them, can we? for sure. And, and Selena, who made the documentary about me, amazing. I mean, I, I can't say that I know 
hundreds of young photographers, but I've seen enough to, to know that they're out there. So well, There are some amazing um, people, but the fact that there's so much information, I mean, you have to scroll. You know, I go on Instagram just to check what my friends are doing, and then two hours later, you know, like, you, why are you scrolling through all this stuff, looking at people's, someone liked it, you got a new follower, you want to see what they're doing. You know, and it, it's just a lot of information to absorb. Whereas before, it was much more... Well, you didn't have access. I'm right. not saying it's a bad thing, but but it's yeah. I don't know. I, I see where it goes. I guess I sort of agree with you. But I, you know, even if that question wasn't meant for you, I'm actually most interested by your answer. Is how do you rate? Yeah, you know, how do you you know how how do you rate what's going on with your generational peers in terms of like the canon of, of photography that you care about? Like I think. I mean, I we're up against a lot, it. especially those who aren't getting help from other places, you know. Um, you mean rich kids? I didn't want to say it, but... <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, I mean, like... And then, especially when you're dealing with, you know, you know, black photographers, female photographers, or both, like me. And, like, you know, you have these... You know, you have microaggressions, you have racism, you have sexism on top of all the other woes of the art world. Um, so you have to hustle hard. There's no other way possible because otherwise you won't be able to, you know. I mean, like I said, I, work, I worked really, really hard. I mean, there's always, I was, like I said, taking six credit hours, doing part-time work and still trying to do photography and like still reach out to editors and everything, you know. And, and John Jay, for the, those of you from out of town or don't know, that's, John Jay College of Criminal Justice. Yes. And it's actually not like the place where they train future cops. No, they do. It, I mean, they do. Yeah. It's not just... <laughs> it's half, it's half. It's so not it's just like, that place. A lot of it is actually a lot of real yeah. advocacy, yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of radical thinking about, well, this system's broken. How do we yeah. humanize it and stuff like that? So yeah. was that kind of... Is that like yeah. foundational to like... Well, your... I studied um, humanities and justice, which is pretty much pre-law. Um, so I like, you know, loved photography, but didn't think that I would ever do it, you know, like, I mean, I was going to, like, try to, but not really, so I, you know, did this, also really interested in, you know, um, history and law, it's not something that I did just to, like, as, like, a sort of, like, you know, back burner type thing, I really love it, I was taking classes about lynching and terrorism, um, so it's stuff that I was really interested in, um, still am, you know, photography may not be always there for me, so I wanted to find something that I could also feel also passionate about yeah so yeah you do have to hustle I mean, you hard. could have been a well-paid lawyer by now you Damn. know <laughs> somehow i'm here with you <laughs> sorry for the wrong turn do we have time for one or two more what do you think evan i think we got time for one more oh. hey guys um Really enjoyed your, your discussions up here. Since we're on the subject of talking about Instagram, as you know, um, they're in the process now of thinking about removing the likes uh, from people's posts. Do you feel as though those likes were removed, that that would free you to post more photos? Or how, do, how is your take on that? Would you enjoy that? Or would it be more of a, of a, of a hindrance for you in your personal work? I like the likes. <laughs> I like the likes, too. Yeah. I guess I like the likes too. And the comments. Are yeah. they thinking of removing comments? I mean, I, you know, I, because it, to me it means, look, I put something out there and I actually know somebody looked at it. That's, yeah. that's right. powerful. Right, exactly, yeah. yeah. yeah it, it wouldn't is. be as much fun without the likes. So now that we know this, you have to make sure to applaud really hard when we're at done Martha here. Cooper Graham. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. You want to do one more? Yeah. All right. It is. It is. Yo, what's up? What's up? What's up? Um, yes, I got a question for everyone here because I'm seeing that there's a intertwining connection between the art that you guys bring with your photos that kind of help tell the story about culture. What is it about the cultures that you guys have connected to or gravitated to in a way that helped you out realize what you wanted to connect to? Why? Why did you want to connect to those cultures? What made you want to tell that story through these photos, through the action? What is it that 
keeps you on the side of telling the story that people aren't telling? Great question. You should have okay. moderated this panel, man. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's fucking like, sorry, I forgot to ask that thing. It's all good. It's all good. Um, I have like one persistent theme that runs through all my photography, and that is creativity in everyday life. And it can be little things like hairstyles. It can be like altering you know, clothing styles, or it can be, you know, more major things. But I'm always looking for ways that people are being creative in their daily lives. The details. Yeah, yeah the details. Yeah, I mean, things that you can actually see in a photograph. And I guess, for me, I've just always been looking for kind of rebel cultures, people who are doing things outside the box, you know, like the Harlem dirt bike sort of writers, which is creativity in itself. Yeah, exactly. People who are not following the norm, and um, that's always been important to me, and it still is to this day. So that's, that's been my thread. Uh, for me, I think it's like visibility. Um, so I, I do love photographing communities that maybe otherwise wouldn't have let a camera come in, or it would have been out of reluctancy. Um, and I mean, in part of just for my personal, you know, I'm Caribbean American, so like, for example, photographing the parade every single year, like that's like my thing. And yeah. I've been doing that even before I wanted to like know that I wanted to do photography, just because that's like my my culture, and that's something that like yeah. I remember doing when I was younger, you know. Um, and I know that like you know maybe in 20 years it may not be around, so. You know, thinking about stuff like that is like really what keeps kind of me going. I yeah. feel that. All right. Wow. Thanks, everyone. This is really fun. I learned a lot. Love you.